Hello, my name is Walter and welcome to my channel. Over the last seven videos, I have shared with you my trip to the Yellowstone National Park. I spent two days there and it was just an unbelievable experience. To sort of recap, I visited on the first day, I spent the entire day at the Yellowstone, Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone and visited the various overlooks to view the upper and lower falls and then I walked down to the brinks of both the upper and lower falls. On the second day I visited the Norris Geyser Basin and the Grand Prismatic Spring. So my goal for this video is to just sort of give you a perspective from a photographer and some tips and for photographers when visiting the park. Now I learned quite a few things that I guess you could say were lessons learned that I'm going to change the next time that I visit the park. Uh, this is not going to be an extensive coverage of everything to visit while you're there at the park. I just don't, I was just there two days. So they're really, uh, in terms of, you know, all the locations and the ins and outs of those locations, I don't have that knowledge. I only have for those two days that I've visited there. But I believe that I've learned a lot that can be helpful to any person and photographer who might want to visit the park. Now I'll leave uh, a couple of links to some channels in the description, one is We're in the Rockies, and another one is She Run the World. Both of those uh, channels really cover more in depth what to do and tips and tricks on visiting the Yellowstone National Park. So, without further ado, the first tip <laughs> that I'd like to uh, share with you is stay longer than I did. Uh, I thought I could see a lot more than I did in those two days, but I underestimated the time spent traveling. Here's a map of the park. Uh, you'll notice that there are these side roads from the various entrances that dead into the main throughway, which is called the Grand Loop. Uh, these loops here that look like it, they it's a figure eight, these loops take you to the main attractions in the park, such as the ones that I visited. Uh, the total mileage of the loop is 142 miles, and you know that might not sound like it's very long, which, relatively speaking, it isn't. But keep in mind that the speed limit is 35 to 45 miles an hour, depending upon the location and time of the day. So if you want to visit the attractions and spend any amount of time to any of those locations, you'll need to stay more than two days. Uh, there's a lot to see. You know, I can't tell you how long you should stay, but the next time that I go, I'm going to spend at least five days there at the park. I think that will give me the opportunity to visit more spots and spend more time at those locations. So the first tip is stay in the park as long as you can. Now the second tip really relates to my first tip and that is if at all possible stay inside the park. My trip was in June of 2021 and initially I reserved lodging there, as you see here in the map around the Old Faithful area. But a couple of months prior to my trip, I got a notice that the they closed those cabins and because of COVID restrictions. Well, that sort of uh, put me in a situation to where I had to find lodging outside the park because the sorry that was a <laughs> plane
plane that just flew by. I had to find other lodging. And the closest that I could afford was about 17 miles from the western entrance. Uh, that is not far from the entrance, but once you entered the park, you had to travel another 14 miles to get to the Grand Loop. Now, of course, the route was beautiful, as you see from these video clips. And I was able to see elk and bison. I even saw a coyote. But while the route was beautiful, there were no attractions on this route. So each day I had to travel 31 miles to get to the loop. So if I was staying in the park, that 31 miles would have been spent on the loop and I would have been able to visit more locations. Also, staying in the park avoids this. <laughs> now, I took this, these videos with my cell phone on my last day as I was leaving, so please forgive the shaky video. Uh, this was not just one road leading to the park entrance, but one of several main roads going through the town. Uh, I measured one line, and it was at least a mile long. But let me also say here that you may very well experience this type of traffic in the park, and there are a number of reasons for this. One, simply because of the number of people. If it is, if there are a ton of folks, <laughs> and there will be, there could just naturally be a backup. In a couple of those videos, you heard me say that I was on my way to visit the to visit Old Faithful and then I put up a message that said I didn't make it. Well, the reason I didn't make it, it was because of the traffic. I was on my way after the Norris Geyser Basin and the traffic just got backed up. I don't know the reason why it was backed up, but it just kept sitting there and sitting there and sitting there. And I just ended up turning around and going back to my lodging, which on that particular day, I wasted uh, 62 miles by going there back and forth twice. So that's one of the various reasons why you should stay in the park if you possibly can. Another reason is that, and I'll get to this in more in depth, is that you might have bison crossing the road. And uh, if that's the case, well, bisons have the right of way and you're just basically sort of stuck. So one way to avoid that, and there are other ways to avoid the traffic, but one way to avoid that is to stay in the park. In fact, what I might do the next time, as you see on the map here, is that you've got this figure eight and you've got the various areas. Well, I might, for example, stay on the first part of the week down here in the Old Faithful area. And for two or three days, I would probably cover this area. And then I might move to the northern part near Mammoth Springs and concentrate on this part so that I will be as close as possible to those various attractions as I possibly can. The first tip is stay as long as you possibly can. The second tip was stay in the park if possible. And the third tip, and you, this is, uh, you know, probably might sound like a given, but for most people it's not. And that is get up early. <laughs> uh, you know, as with a lot of national parks, especially Yellowstone, there are a ton of people. And we photographers know the value of getting up early to catch the sunrises and golden hour. And if you get up real, real early, and I mean at the crack of dawn and get out, then you're going to avoid a lot of the crowds. In fact, uh, more than likely what will happen is after you've finished visiting some locations and then as you're leaving, people are arriving. And then maybe you can take, for example, like I did, take a break during the midday and then go back out into the park later in the afternoon and uh, 
the crowds would be less at that time, at least when I was there during the afternoon, the crowds were less. It didn't seem like it in terms of some of the parking areas, but on the road, it was less traffic. Now, one of the things to that I want to say here is that even if you get up early, you might have to deal with stop traffic. And it's just something that you have to just be prepared for because if there are, as I just mentioned a moment ago, if there are bison in the road, then uh, they have the right of way and there's nothing you can do. If you look at some of a number of videos online, online, you'll see a lot of people stopped on the road viewing animals like bears crossing the road or bison and they're out taking photographs. Well, I was under the impression that you could stop on the road to take photographs like that. But when I got to the park, there were signs all over the place saying that stopping on the road was prohibited and that you were required to turn off into a pullout to view the wildlife. And fortunately, there are a lot of pullouts on a regular basis as you're going down the road. So with that being said, that brings me to my third tip. And that is, if at all possible, include a long lens. <laughs> so that you can safely photograph the wildlife. And when I'm saying a long lens, I'm talking about maybe uh, 400 and, and longer because it's important to keep the proper distance from the wild animals. For example, it's 25 yards for bison and elk and hard 100 yards from bears and wolves. As I was hiking back to my car from the Fairy Falls Overlook at the Grand Prismatic Spring, there were, in a certain area, there were these bison who were just right next to the trail. Hiking up the Fairy Falls, they were far enough away to where you didn't have to worry about them. But coming back, they had moved and they were standing right next to the, the trail. Uh, fortunately, there was a hill next to that trail so that I just sort of, you know, went up the hill and around to keep that distance. But what I couldn't believe was that there were just people just walking right on the trail, just right next to them, uh, riding their bikes like, you know, they were just sort of uh, household pets uh, or domesticated animals. And in fact, there was this one family who had their child in front of them and they stopped and they must have been maybe 10, 15 feet from the, from the bison. Um, I, looking back, I'd wish I'd gotten a video of that, but at the time I was afraid to uh, look back because I didn't want to witness a tragedy. So if you aren't able to uh, bring with you a real long lens, please do not move up to try to get closer to the animal to get a photograph. Your photograph is not worth getting injured for or, or dying for. In fact, I'll leave a link, another video from uh, We Are the Rockies of stupid behavior at the park, and you'll see what I mean when I talked about that situation there. So uh, those are some basic tips. They're not mind-shattering or mind-blowing or anything like that. They're just some things that I learned that hopefully would be helpful to you if you decide to go to the park. And just sort of to recap, the uh, tips are stay there as long as you possibly can. Stay in the park. Get up real early. And bring a long lens for wildlife photography if you, if you can. I hope these tips have been helpful to you. Um, please give me a thumbs up and leave a comment if uh, I really enjoy uh, seeing and reading your comments. 
And maybe maybe you have some tips. Maybe you've visited the park and you've got some lessons learned that you can share there. Please go ahead and do that. That would be very helpful to the community. So this is the last Yellowstone video and subsequent videos that I'll be sharing will be from a couple from West Virginia, uh, one from this area, and just some others that I have planned. So thank you for watching, and I'll look forward to sharing another video with you real soon. Bye.